In today's video I'm going to process gold corner BGA chips. Here I have sorted 47 pieces of BGA chips which have been accumulated from different sources but the main source is from old PC motherboard and some LCD TV motherboards. Those BGA from PC motherboards usually have more gold content. Some of them have copper heatsink on the top and some others have no heatsink. These chips without copper heatsink usually have more proportional gold comparing to their total weights. Usually refiners process bottom layer separately but what I'm going to do in this video is to process them all together, oxy layer and bottom layer. Since some gold stick to the bottom layer while separating epoxy. To start it's necessary to leach solder out first and get rid of tin. Usually solder alloy of BGA chips comprising lead and tin and in newer PCBs they also use 4-5% silver. To lead solder out you can use dilute hydrochloric acid that way tin dissolves silver and lead chloride precipitate. Another way and a bit more expensive way is to use nitric acid. Nitric acid will form metastatic acid from tin. Silver and lead will form their corresponding nitrate salt, which are soluble in the solution. That's why I prefer to use nitric acid instead of hydrochloric acid. It's easier to recover silver since it is soluble, but hydrochloric acid will form silver chloride which precipitate on the parts you are leach out. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. I also would keep metastatic acid for tin recovery. First of all, I'm going to open one of these packages using sulfuric acid to show you how the gold bond wires arrange on the PCB. Before doing anything, I'm going to weight these chips up. Note that this weight is some of epoxy solder and bottom layer. Here it is, this is about 155 grams of intact BGA chips. I've placed one BGA with bottom layer in a concentrated sulfuric acid on the hot plate to open the package and see what's inside and how the gold bond wires arrange on the bottom layer which when you want to take them apart some gold stick to the bottom layer. I need to see that. And while processing this, it is much safer to place a watch glass on the top of the beaker. This will condense lots of the acidic fumes and they return back into the beaker. Uh, you know, this is a mess. This process is a mess and cause lots of irritating fumes. By doing this, since the boiling temperature of uh, sulfuric acid is pretty uh, high, something around 320 and this will easily condense film just by air and this is very much better doing this process in a pot since you don't have any uh, proper lead for a pot and as I saw this lots of uh, refiners do that in a steel pot with no lead and lots of irritating films comes out from the hot sulfuric acid I just need to wait maybe one hour or 45 minutes to this process become completed and after that I will back soon to show you guys what we get in this package. You can see some veins from the epoxy which is being dissolved. That's interesting. There is some different chips which is called flip chip. These are all flip chips which is used widely in the modern uh, PCBs and modern, they have uh, much newer technology. And there isn't any gold bond wire used in this kind of chip. These haven't any value for gold recovery, but except for some uh, small spots of gold. To be honest, if you have a couple of these, you can just keep them until they reach to a decent amount of Philip chips to be recovered for gold on their PCBs. But there is some uh, MLCCs on some of them 
which you can separate them for palladium recovery but they might not uh, contain any palladium though still they have some silver and this metallic one this is just heat sink there is nothing underneath just to show you guys I have to open this and also as you see here there is a silicon die at the middle and there is no gold or even any spot of gold plating and also there is a, a MLCC here this is just nickel there is nothing to be recovered this is nickel plated copper uh, to be honest I've scratched this green layer here from this VGA as you can see there is there is a overall copper layer underneath on the top of this layer and there is nothing else you may heard of that that there is a, a laminate and underneath the laminate there is a gold uh, to be recovered but as you observe here there is nothing for gold to be recovered under the silicon die after cleaning with nitric acid as you can see there is something with golden appearance here probably there is a thin layer of gold here but or maybe not to figure this out I'm going to test this with aqua regia and I will show you the result here is the flip chip been traded with hot aqua regia some drops of aqua regia and uh, just in case to demonstrate this process and uh, show you guys that there is nothing in this flip chip and in and this color is just for uh, silicon die design to work as a IC chip in electronic and this reflective appearance of this isn't gold I've already done this process using cyanide and uh, to be said I was sure that there isn't any gold and this time I just decided to repeat this uh, with aqua regia just in case to show you guys there is nothing in this flip chips and as you can see here this drop of aqua regia turn a bit yellow and now I'm going to add the stannous chloride to see what we got here nothing the drop here turn colorless and this is sign for having no gold in this flip chips and to be said totally we have not gold in this type of chip flip chip with a metallic overall heat sink anyway at the meantime I was processing uh, this chip in sulfuric acid and it seems to be ready to be washed and uh, look and getting closer look to see what we got inside this package with bottom layer this is a BGA chip which been processed with sulfuric acid I'm going to wash this and I will back soon to discuss about what we got here this process chip was exactly like this whole chip I process whole chip in sulfuric acid and as you observe here uh, everything is gone the glass fiber remain copper dissolve and uh, same as for the gold corner plating been dissolved I've got to do something for gold corner to keep it be processed for the whole batch which I want to process to not lose this gold plating here and as you observe here I have bottom layer with many gold bond wires let's check this out under microscope and here is 
beautiful gold bond wire. Isn't it? I need to remove uh, this remained epoxy here. It seems I removed VGA chip from sulfuric acid uh, much earlier than it's become complete and all resin dissolve in uh, sulfuric acid. I will take it back and finally this is the BGA we got from this process opening package with hot concentrated sulfuric acid and uh, as you can see I remove all epoxy as much as I could and uh, still there is some carbon particles stuck between the gold bond wires uh, but this is not a big deal this could be traded with aqua regia and gold would get dissolved completely let's talk about it what I did this to uh, process it with what bottom layer in uh, sulfuric acid this is the microscopic view of this BGA chips been opened and uh, let's show you this gold foils here uh, note that I'm not talking about the gold bond wires these gold foils under the gold bond wires are the part which stick to the bottom layer when you detach the epoxy uh, mechanically that's why I decided to remove epoxy just uh, to recover gold completely in a uh, single process and as you can see here this is a thick pretty thick uh, gold foil here which has a good amount of gold I'm going to process whole this batch to get gold out of it and uh, first as I said I'm going to uh, remove solder and possible silder, silver in uh, nitric acid since I'm going to draw out last bit of gold I'm going to cover this gold corner using a marker this is exactly the uh, inspired from the old school method which been used for etching PCBs when you draw the circuit passes using this marker waterproof marker and then you place PCB in very colorized solution to see if this works but maybe this doesn't work since I'm gonna tra trade this in nitric acid and as you can see there is a uh, ball grate just behind of the gold corner and you cannot cut that if you cut that you will get some tin and that way you can uh, process tin in hydrochloric acid or nit nitric acid since I'm going to uh, recover silver I uh, decided to process these in nitric acid but I'm sure this marker ink will not be affected in hydrochloric acid but I'm not sure about nitric acid since it is oxidizing acid let's see what will happen and here you can see the gold corner still is there under the marker it's attacked a bit since it wasn't covered completely but still gold foil is there and could be recovered the only thing matter here to not mix the gold foil with uh, sonos chloride and the gold foil still is on board and this method works to start process I add distilled water just enough to cover every single BGA chip this beaker and there we go this is about 200 milliliters of distilled water also I have this piece of solder which I've accumulated from uh, PCBs where the BGA chips are solder on the board on the main board I just collect this using a spatula and I'm going to add to this batch to recover silver with 
all the solder here and uh, turn it to the metastonic acid to be processed for tin later. Now to start reaction I turn the hot plate and place it on the medium heat and now I'm going to add nitric acid this is 50% nitric acid and uh, exactly 50 milliliters to help with dissolving all solder here and produce metastonic acid and silver nitrate in this solution reaction was going for about one hour and uh, there is a hint of blue in this solution which means the acid reached to the base copper I'm going to remove BGA chips before the gold foil been released in this huge amount of uh, metastonic acid but you should be careful about this because there is a toxic lead metal dissolved in this procedure and you should be careful about that to not touch solution to wash PGA chips I start with pouring metastonic acid through a strainer and then to be washed And as you observe, the gold foils still are in the place. Still, the gold foil is there due to the covering with waterproof marker. And here is our clean BGA chips with their gold foils at the place and remain almost untouched. Let's show you some gold corners still at the place. Copper attacked a bit on heat sink and this is the gold corner and BGA chip is clean out of solder. Same for this and here is gold under the marker still marker is there same for this and some other VGA chips look at the gold corner is in the place here are all VGA chips ready to be processed with sulfuric acid I decided to cut the gold corner before going for um, uh, sulfuric acid because this gold foil if comes into contact with uh, sulfuric acid it will mix in the fine powder with the carbon and it would be hard to reclaim it back I just cut the corner and place them to be recovered with sulfuric acid and the corner will be skip sulfuric acid step to be processed in the aquaregia directly now that there isn't any solder under the bottom layer and here is all corners of BGA to digest epoxy I have I'm gonna add some uh, sulfuric acid this is 250 milliliters of industrial cheap sulfuric acid but it's 98 percent but the color is a bit brown due to the dissolved carbon caused by long-term storage in the polyethylene containers let's add just sulfuric acid and turn the hot plate on to reach temperature to 100 degrees Celsius and leave it for one, one hour or so to complete digestion of epoxy and leave the gold bond wires 
exactly like this when we tested for process for this process on one of those BGA chips there shouldn't be any moisture on the watch glass I'm cleaning it just to not weaken the sulfuric acid power to digest BGA chips Lots of foam started to being produced in this process. It seems this is totally different uh, comparing to the process when you want just test our one chip and in the scaled up process it's totally different and foams come up in order to prevent that from overflowing I'm going to transfer everything to a beaker, larger beaker, but I should be careful to not just fall everything, every BGA chips from high to not break this glassware and let's close the lid with watch glass 12 bit condensing films one of the big disadvantages with wet ashing process is foaming you certainly need a big jar to provide the space for growing foams just look at the foams where they reached by. Now I need to wash this stuff to get all carbon out to be processed and dissolve with aqua regia. I washed all BGA chips by water flow while placing a strainer on its way to not lose any gold bond wires. All residue washed carefully and I took copper heat sinks out. Now it's ready for base metals digestion using nitric acid. I added few milliliters of 50% nitric acid to dissolve copper. It took about 30 minutes to be done. Here is gold bond wires ready to be dissolved in aqua regia. I poured nitric acid as much as I could. Also, I use the filter paper to catch all possible moving gold bond wires and then add it to the same batch to be processed with aqua regia. Base metals dissolve, I just need to add aqua regia and at this moment I'm going to process these gold corners which I separated from the BGA bottom layer. I transfer all of this to the this batch beside there is a one bottom layer from the BGAs I uh, split it up just to show you the bottom layer and compare with other chips which wasn't detached this is from the same BGA chips After addition of sulfuric acid, you can see white cloudiness uh, in this bed. This is exactly what I'm just trying to keep it out of this process and uh, not be uh, transfer after filtration of aqua regia. 
and to start process I'm going to add about 40 milliliters of 50% concentrated nitric acid you may wondering why I'm not adding nitric acid uh, drop wise to this batch because there is some impurities and uh, we are not sure about the exact amount of gold in this batch just I consider the upper limitation of this um, batch metal content and also I consider the uh, last neutralization process prior to drop gold and I decide how much nitric acid is needed I usually add for uh, every one gram of gold about 0 0.7 milliliters of nitric acid uh, to be to dissolve gold but here definitely we have some base metal which wasn't uh, traded completely with nitric acid that's why I'm not adding nitric acid drop wise in this batch I just add 40 milliliters of nitric acid right now to start reaction let's leave it on the medium heat for the gold to be dissolved completely Solution stopped fizzing, so this confirm gold complete digestion. Afterwards I start filtering solution. I've drawn last bit of gold from this uh, glass fibers from bottom layer of BGA chips and the last drop from this mass here which I've got tested with Estanos chloride and result was completely negative for gold but still there is some cloudiness in this which needs to be filtered again just to clear solution up and then it's ready for gold dropping to clean this solution and get rid of cloudiness I'm going to filter perform vacuum filtration using a center glass filter since the cloudiness caused by some uh, metal precipitate like lead sulfate and they are in form of nanoparticles it's not easy to be filtered you can let it settle down and siphon solution on the top or perform filtration several times to do so I'm going to tear off some filter paper this will help to make some fibers sprayed out in this solution and forming an obstacle to to clog that uh, nanoparticles uh, on each other and prevent uh, passing through the filter right I added just enough third filter paper after additioning pieces of uh, filter paper to this solution I place it on the medium heat to boil for some minutes this cuts that uh, all fibers of filter paper take apart and uh, sprayed out into the solution and this will absorb all nanoparticles suspending in solution when I'm going to filter uh, through a filter paper or center glass vacuum filtration according to the CM Hawk book uh, as she said uh, you can add some crystals of nitrate like potassium nitrate to the solution to help with precipitating and sticking all suspended nanoparticles of uh, whatever it is usually it's metal sulfate or oxide but in my experience using some pieces of filter paper would be helpful just enough to get rid of this turbidity now that the solution is being heated I thought it's good idea to add sulfamic acid to neutralize nitric acid or the NOx nitric acid uh, at the same time I just 
trying to add this slowly not and in the in the small portion to not uh, react vigorously and as you saw just some trace of bubbles of nitrous oxide came off As you can see the turbidity is gone due to the heating solution uh, whatever it is it's dissolved in, in hot acid so after boiling a bit I should let solution to cool down again and after that I'm allowed to filter solution I will leave it here for one hour to cool down slowly just in case to catch all impurities on the filter paper fibers. Since I neutralize and denote solution using sulfamic acid just in case to not form any colloidal gold I add a few milliliters of bleach since bleach is much easier to be expelled which form chlorine gas uh, than nitric acid and here is bleach added and now I'm going to filter solution first I stir it well just to spread all paper fibers into the solution and then I start pouring the solution appearance got better but still there is some uh, mud in this solution just I need to repeat it once more to trap all cloudiness, all dirt in this filter papers in the center glass and you can see there is lots of brown stuff here The solution appearance got a lot better uh, still there is some turbidity but it's not a big deal that can't be fixed while washing gold powder and here as you observe there is lots of that impurities stuck into the uh, filter paper fibers now our solution is ready for gold to be dropped if there would be any grace on the wall gold will start to grow on the wall and stick to the wall that's why I cleaned this baker prior to drop gold and now it's completely ready to drop gold I'm going to use ferrous sulfate or green iron sulfate and here is some distilled water I add a few milliliters of hydrochloric acid and then I add just enough ferrous sulfate we dissolve and add it to the main batch this is just way more than enough ferrous sulfate been dissolved and now it's time to begin the show of dropping gold solution color is changing 
and solution appearance is getting turbide and some brown the gold is coming out this scene is the best possible rest that a refiner can take after a couple of hours processing you know that crew the stuff to draw all gold out let's leave it here the complete precipitation of gold and now let's drop silver by adding some hydrochloric acid probably there is lots of lead metal in this batch which would be precipitate with silver let's see it seems there is not too much silver in this batch after some minutes a white precipitate form here this isn't necessarily silver since the crystals is needle shape most likely there is lead in this and in this solder probably there wasn't any silver since the silver chloride will precipitate like a mass exactly like a cheese and this is not similar to that crystals the way to test that is just filter these crystals and trying to dissolve with ammonia if it dissolves this is silver if not we have lead here after a while and checking these crystals a bit now i can say that this crystals is not silver we have just uh, lead chloride here and i will separate this maybe it comes useful to some projects and it could be used as an auxiliary agent for cyanidation process and uh, finally there it is this is our gold which precipitated i twirl it a bit to accumulate powders at one corner and this is our gold now I'm going to evacuate waste solution using this suction vessel by vacuum And at this level, some fine gold powder started to come to the surface and I stop this process here and I'm going to transfer solution to a smaller beaker to wash and clean gold. Diluting this solution a bit will help with precipitating fine powder much faster. I add this solution which just decanted to the first stock pot since there might be some suspended gold powder which you don't really want to lose. Maybe a few milligrams of gold. There is some copper in this stock pot in case of precipitating any soluble precious metal ion. And let's transfer it there. I poured liquid on the top in the stock pot just in case to not lose any fine gold powder. And now I'm gonna wash gold powder in concentrated hydrochloric acid to remove all impurities 
and turn the gold powder light brown. As you observe here, gold powder got brown, light brown. Sometime in this step, uh, besides impurities in this solution, some gold dissolve only in hydrochloric acid. I'm using industrial grade hydrochloric acid. These gallons of hydrochloric acid been stored for a long time and probably some chlorine gas produced in them. That's why hot hydrochloric acid uh, sometimes dissolve gold and in our case let's check it out As you observe, there is just a little bit of gold dissolved that we shouldn't just pour the liquid away or even in a stock pot before testing. It's possible to precipitate gold while it's being cleaned. You can add every reducing agent like SMB or oxalic acid to keep your gold out of solution and uh, also clean the gold powder at the same time this is the cure for this phenomena in order to fix that i add a few drops of ammonia to provide some ammonium in this solution and just a few milligrams of oxalic acid this will prevent gold being dissolved in this low quality uh, hydrochloric acid. SMB is good for this purpose. I don't want to dilute hydrochloric acid and SMB, when you add SMB in uh, powder form, it makes lots of gas that may not dissolve properly in solution. But oxalic acid dissolve in solution and works slowly while the gold powder is being cleaned. To wash and melt down gold powder I'm going to filter that and uh, I just use filter paper the way it is only fourfold because I'm going to get gold powder at the tip of filter paper gold powder is been filtered as you observe and washed it's now ready to be melted I add some bright while it's wet still wet just to hold everything together while melting gold is in filter paper and it seems we got decent amount of gold just to start melting I'm going to preheat crucible with some burex already added just in order to in order to provide molten salt to help with sticking all gold powder together and not lose anything at all
Okay guys, this project is done. We processed some BGA chips in this video and uh, here is the gold yielded from this process. This gold bottom weights 0.91. This is great. I think the yield is great since I process uh, BGA chips with bottom layer every single piece of gold is in this BGA chips been recovered and uh, let's do some math this is one of those bottom layer without any uh, solder on it and this is clean to be said this is clean this weight 1.44 or to be said 1.5 couple of uh, about 47 BGA chips which been processed this in this project some of those had a bigger and a bit heavier bottom layer and some of them was a smaller so I consider I would consider uh, one Point five grams for uh, bottom layer of all BGA chips. If I consider every single uh, bottom layer 1.5 grams, so there was 47 of that bottom layer, which is 70.5 to be said 70 grams of the starting weight was from uh, bottom layer what I'm gonna do now is calculating yield from these BGA chips since uh, we got about 70 grams of uh, bottom layer from those BGA chips this is approximate calculation a starting material which was bottom layer epoxy and some uh, solder was 155 grams and I'm going to subtract 70 gram from that starting weight which 85 is as the result this is epoxy and solder weight and let's consider uh, the solder weight about 5 grams to be set 5 so we have 80 grams of epoxy layer from that all materials and here we have 0 0.91 grams of gold as the result and from this amount some some of gold was from the gold corner and also the gold which remain on the bottom layer so we uh, consider it 0 0.8 grams of gold from only epoxy this is approximate yield from this so This is the final yield. Let's calculate gold per BGA chip from epoxy. If we consider it 800 milligrams and 47 BGA chips. To be said, there is about 17 milligrams of gold, but to be honest, there was uh, some uh, big BGA chips and some of those was uh, with heat sink, copper heat sink and some some of those was uh, smaller but I've got about 70 milligrams average gold from every single BGA chips only from epoxy so let's calculate what would be yield per kilogram for uh, this type of BGA chips since we, we got we calculated its yield for epoxy part is 
800 milligrams or 0 0.8 uh, grams what is the goal yield for one kilogram multiply by thousand and divide by 80 and here is the yield 10 grams of gold per kilograms of only epoxy layer which is great since the BGA chip I use to recover gold from them was old and as you said the majority of it that was from motherboards some old motherboards definitely there was some ceramic uh, CPU on them and some of those CPU card which is totally old motherboard and I think that's great this is great yield from BGA chips there's nothing more to be done with this project hope you enjoyed don't forget to like subscribe and let me know your idea leave me a comment and until next project See you next time. In order to trade waste product produced in this recovery, all lead metal collected as the lead chloride to be used in another project. And waste liquids have been tested for further possible precious metals and after confirming no precious metals, I transferred them all to a stock pot number 2 to catch dissolved copper using a piece of iron and being prepared for safe disposal.